Oh Italy, it's been a while. After a decent flight to Milan Malpensa, I discovered what it means to live la dolce vita and enjoyed the charming city of Milan to the fullest. Sadly, it is now time to say goodbye to the city of fashion and fly to a country I actually have not been to yet. So let's fly to Norway. Hey guys and beautiful good morning from Milano Malpensa Airport Terminal 1. Today I'll be flying all the way to Oslo on board a Scandinavian Airlines flight that is operated by a Boeing 737-800 aircraft in economy class. Well, initially this flight was planned to be operated by the smaller Dash 700 variant of Boeing 737 series, which I would have enjoyed even a little bit more, I guess. But anyway, when life gives you lemons, just ask for salt and tequila, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. So let's head right inside the terminal building and visit. So let's head right inside the terminal building and visit the check-in. Cheers. The question how to get to the airport on a budget is always a good bottle opener for the first voiceover sequence, right? Well, there are basically two options. The first one is a bus from a private company for 10 euros and the second one is a train for 12 euros. I went for the second option today as it is slightly faster and way more convenient in my eyes. Anyway, Terminal 1 opened in 1998 and meanwhile became home to every airline as the older Terminal 2 closed completely in 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic. My Scandinavian Airlines flight SK4718 is leaving at 11.05 am from gate A76 and the check-in is located at Concourse 5 today. By the way, SAS allows one personal item which must fit under the seat in front and one cabin bag for the overhead compartment per passenger. Check baggage however must be bought extra. By the way, I just love the huge glass front behind the check-in concourses as you have a great view of some parts of the apron from there. But let's finally head to the security control. Alright, check-in is all set. I got a nice seat right next to the window and then hopefully empty row, it should be 24A. Um, actually I already checked in online beforehand like yesterday in the morning. Um, but I just wanted to confirm um, that my row is still empty. at the check-in counter. Anyway, um, let's head right through the security control, which should be like right behind me. Let's go. Well, the security control was actually quite a mess as my backpack got pulled out um, by the staff and he was like, well, there needs to be, there has to be some, some liquid inside, but there wasn't any, which was kind of strange. Um, so he was like searching my bag for 10 minutes, found nothing and then released me and furthermore my um, headphones got lost during this process. So I was there for like 10 minutes more in order to look for them. Um, turned out that they were laying somewhere under the searching table at the end of the security control. However, I'm now heading to the gate already a bit late. The gate is uh, scheduled to close in like 15 to 20 minutes. So let's head there as uh, quick as possible. On my way to the gate, I found these rather ugly sculptures. Okay, honestly, I am not really into art. And also an aircraft with a quite interesting livery. This Boeing 787-9 has a North Atlantic livery on its tail and the Air Europa livery on its fuselage. Can anyone explain that? Thanks. Anyway, the gate area itself is packed with some seating possibilities and also restaurants for those who may want to avoid airplane food. I finally made it to today's gate, A76, which is now right in front of me, so behind you guys. Um, however, the view on today's Boeing 737-800 aircraft is not too spectacular, I have to say. However, um, the yeah, boarding is about to be finished so the gate is about to close so well let's head right inside the aircraft can't wait to finally head inside and show you guys the cabin interior and the onboard service <sighs> you know it's always a great feeling when uh, going through the jet bridge um all the way to the aircraft i don't know it's like i'm always excited um, even though i already had like i don't know several hundred flights in my life 
um, this is always a really exciting moment. Alright, finally settled in at my seat 24F, yeah, that seems to be correct. And I also just realized why um, this flight was changed to be operated from the Dash 700 to the Dash 800 variant of um, Boeing 737. Because we are pretty packed today, um, flight seems to be pretty full. However, let's take a first quick look around my seat. Scandinavian Airlines equipped their Boeing 737-800 with 181 seats in a full economy 3-3 configuration and offers generous legroom thanks to rather slim seats without magazines in front of my knees. For reference, I am 1.85 meters tall. Of course, the seat also features a solid foldable table and a magazine compartment including a sick bag, a safety card and an onboard menu card right above. A USB power outlet is also built into the front seat, which I absolutely love to see, and the view outside from my C24F is also good. So, let's finally take a quick glimpse throughout the entire cabin. From the flight deck, the cabin on behalf of the crew, I would like to wish you a very welcome on board. This is a Star Alliance flight bound for Oslo. The flight time is estimated at 2 hours and 35 minutes. Before departure, the cabin crew will perform a safety demonstration. Please pay close attention. Alright, we are now taxiing to the gate and about to line up the runway. So let's double check that my seatbelt is securely fastened for takeoff. Um, the cabin crew already secured the cabin for takeoff as well. Um, Fasten seatbelt sign is of course switched on, so let's have that we will have a nice departure here from Milano Malpensa Airport with maybe also some nice views over the city or over the entire area. Let's see. Today's onboard service started about 30 minutes into the flight and on domestic and European flights SAS offers um, complimentary tea and coffee which is pretty nice um, and also becoming rare on um, premium airlines in Europe unfortunately. Um, furthermore you can buy some further drinks like water and um, soft drinks but also alcoholic drinks as well as snacks and meals in the um, onboard shop which is probably starting like in the second service round or something. We will take a closer look inside the onboard menu um, later on in just a minute and first enjoy the complimentary hot drinks. By the way, there is one thing I always wanted to ask you. Do you put milk in your tea? I actually only do that when I'm flying and I would never even think about it when I'm for example at home. Cheers. The coffee is actually not too bad for airplane coffee. Definitely had worse before. Alright, firstly here is a nicely designed sick bag and next comes the onboard menu. As I said before, everything apart from coffee and tea must be purchased extra for rather high prices. You know, 3 euros 50 for a small can of coke or 5 euros 50 for instant pasta is just not really a steal in my eyes. But anyway, finally here is the safety card of today's Boeing 737-800 aircraft. Ladies and gentlemen, our first officer speaking. Yes, we have uh, reached our cruising altitude of 37,000 feet and around 11,300 meters uh, this uh, uh, morning and uh, cruising up towards Oslo Guard 1 Airport. Uh, past Köln in uh, Germany a few minutes ago and um, of course takes us up towards the western parts of Denmark. Uh, following the Danish west coast up towards uh, the southern parts of Norway and then uh, uh, up towards Oslo Guard 1 Airport. Check on the ground in about well, slightly more than an hour and a half uh, from now, uh, puts us around uh, quarter till uh, two local time. 
I would say that it is now time to take a closer look at today's seed, isn't it? As you can see here, the seat was manufactured by the infamous German company Recaro Aircraft Seating, based in the city of Schwäbisch Hall. The foldable table is further extendable and looks like it has been cleaned before the flight, which is of course highly appreciated by me. As I have shown you guys beforehand already, the front seat is also equipped with a USB power outlet which was working perfectly throughout the entire flight and also a coat hook which I personally never use. Furthermore, the seat can be leaned backward by a few degrees with this button on the armrest and the seat itself is covered with a very comfortable grey fabric cover among a white headrest cover with a small SAS logo on it. And last but not least, the passenger service unit above me features both reading lights and fresh air nozzles, however I prefer not to touch anything up there as it looks like the area above me wasn't cleaned for months, if not years. There are passengers who are now preparing the cabin for landing. Items heavier than one kilo, for example, a laptop must be safely stored in your cabin baggage and charging cords must be disconnected from the seat charging port. We ask you to place your cabin baggage either under the seat in front of you or in the overhead compartment. Fasten your seat belt, raise your seat back and table to the upright position. Also note that the window shades must be opened. Well, we are finally approaching Oslo. Um, it got a bit bumpy during the approach so far, but well, nothing too special. However, I am uh, actually really looking forward to finally visit Oslo, um, or Norway in general, as Norway is one of the last um, European countries I have not visited yet, believe it or not. Furthermore, there is, um, well, let me guess, uh, Croatia, um, and Slovenia, and I think uh, then I should be all set if I visited these two as well. But anyway, um, let's just hope that we will have a nice landing in Oslo and some nice um, approach views. Flaps are just uh, set to one for the final approach. Um, fasten seatbelt sign is switched on as well, so let's double check that my one is securely fastened and touch down in Oslo very soon. Flying with SES at Starlight today, and we hope to see you aboard again soon. From all of us at SES, thank you very much, and we wish you all a pleasant weekend. Thank you, bye bye. Thanks. Alright, sadly it is now time to enjoy one last view of today's Boeing 737 and to sum up the past SAS flight. In general, SAS is a lovely airline offering a decent cabin product compared to other European premium airlines. The ticket prices however are quite high for those who are too old to buy a youth fare ticket like me today. But in the end, SAS is a decent airline with charming crews so I can definitely recommend flying them. Well, I will now spend a few hours in the beautiful city of Oslo before taking the next flight to another lovely Scandinavian country. So stay tuned for the next video. Cheers!